this is Harry Judd for Boxing Social in association with Bet Fred at the University of Bolton. I'm delighted to be joined by Greg Marriott. Look, it's your first time working with Liam Taylor, um, but what a performance there. European champion, obviously now the British title eliminator. What a performance by Liam? Good, like I say, <clears throat> I, um, I worked with Jack, Jack Raffert for his performance at uh, Ten Stone. And obviously met Liam over in Foot of Insurance. He says, can you work with him? Uh, can you work with me? So I did. And um, told him what I've been doing in his last camps. And I'm just like, as soon as I hear what people have been doing, I'm like, I can add 70, 80% to your game. You know, just, just with what they've been doing. So we got on board with him. And uh, listen, everybody from that gym, it's, they're, they're a pleasure to work with. Do you know what I mean? They stick to me 100%. You know what I mean? So um, it just showed tonight. You know, he was big, strong. You know, he... I don't think other kid could have even hurt him. Obviously, he took he took a few shots that he didn't need to, but I just think he was that he was that revved up and ready to go and that and that fit and ready for it. That I thought I didn't think he was going to get him out that early. You know what I mean? But then body shots, he just he was wincing every time they hit him. So listen, I'm I'm really really happy for him. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm well I'm well I'm well happy that he's deserved that 100. percent Yeah, I know what you mean. Look, uh, what a team also to be a part of. Steve Mailer, I mean Zach Miller's there. I mean all the gang are here tonight as well. So. Yeah, I've been, been fortunate enough to go to the gym, um, old-fashioned, spitting sawdust gin, they're, they're proper boxing people, so yeah, you must be delighted to, to work with these lot. I've, I've worked with Terry Flanagan, do you know what I mean, when he won his world title, and um, <clears throat> so I've known Steve a long time, and boys, I think that gym uh, over in Ancoats is uh, a mini version of top rank, you go in there, you have to take your, you don't take your coat off, you take your pants and your socks off, it's that hot, do you know what I mean, kind of thing, it's, uh, it's crazy, but no, it's... Uh, it is. It's, it's, it's a good. It's, I won't even say it's a team. I've said it before. It's like a family in there. Do you know what I mean? It's. Uh, it, it really, really is good. And Steve puts some. Listen, Steve's no, you know, uh, new bit at game. He's been there years with Terry, so it, he knows what it's like at this at that level. Do you know what I mean? So and it, and it shows. He doesn't let his fighters get away with anything. They respect him. You know what I mean? They do exactly what he says. And every single one of the fighters. You know, I've got uh, I've got Tom Raffert here next week. Never worked with him before. So big cha big change in them all. To be fair. Obviously, the European title means loads for, for, for Liam. I'm hopefully going to get a chat with him very soon. But um, that British title eliminator, I think that's what really got him. I think that's what he really wants, that British title. Yeah, I mean, I was speaking to him, I was speaking to him last week. I like his, he's so cool and calm and collected. You know, he doesn't really get much of game away. You know, even when he's won there, he's so happy. But like, before a fight, it's like, you can't really get a gauge of him. I'm, like, I'm asking people, he's usually like, it's like, yeah, he's cool. But like, he's just... You don't ever see him get revved up. He's just he's just so calm. But when he gets in there, obviously he does business. So um, yeah, I think uh, I think he didn't want to talk too much about. It. He just wanted to get this one under his belt, get the win. And listen, what a better way to, to you know to, to stop a guy like that in, in fashion he did. And I think that does more more for him mentally than anything else. Do you know what I mean? And I think I think he knows now. He believes in himself now. Obviously, I'm saying he's working with me, but he's got everything. He's ticking every single box now. So it, it can only go from there to there with confidence. I mean, obviously you mentioned his character, Test as well, the amount of support that he got this evening as well, it's, it's, it's great to see really. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to come here for a jack, it's, it's packed out, you know, you get, you get all your locals coming, but uh, he's, he's a likeable character, Liam, you can't not like him, you can't not, not like any of them in there, do you know what I mean, they're really, really real, down-to-earth people, and I think that goes a long way in boxing, you know, I think it's still like, when you get someone like Prince Naz or Eubank Senior, you either love him or you hate him, they put bums on seats, but people like real, real kids like these, you know, you can't not like them, so they do get a big following and a big crowd. Yeah, you've been a part, work with so many fighters, you know, how important are these small shows, small hall shows, let's say? The, the, these get you to the top, you know, and you should never, you should never negate that because obviously when you go up, you're always going to come down, like, like you say, they get some people get some bad decisions against them all, they just don't go their way, and sometimes you have to go back down the ladder, you know, but... But to keep these shows going like this, it does make people, you know, it, do, it does make boxers. It, every, every fight's a stepping stone to the next thing. So even, I said this level, even, even lower than this, you know, your shows, you, you have to start somewhere. So, you know, you have, you have to give back. And, like, um, I just think it's great that they, they keep putting shows on like this. He's obviously just won the title. Um, is he allowed a few treats, a few cakes and stuff now as a nutritionist? What's he allowed from now on to rest up? Tonight, tonight can have a, Do you know what? Everyone says this, like, oh, I'm going to go out and eat loads. You know, after a fight, they don't. Too much adrenaline is kicking in. They're not even that hungry. They, they, they want to go out and eat loads. They might have a slice of pizza and, like, not interested. But then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday comes and, like, you know what I mean? But, uh, listen, they're, all, they're always good on the weight. They're always back in gym. You know, they never, they never far away from a gym or training so even when they're not on the diet with me they're still ticking over and doing something so um, with, with kids like this you don't really have to rein them in as much you know what I mean so 
it'll be good. Yeah, I think many gyms are like that, and Steve especially. Um, but one fighter you have worked with that does fluctuate is obviously Billy Joe Saunders. What is the latest with him? You know, are we going to see him back in the ring? Yeah, I think December. I think uh, I think they're, they're looking, looking for a December date. Obviously, um, he's, he's 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 trying to come back to a, uh, have a fight and then a big a mega fight next year. So again, it's a slow process. <clears throat> you know, he's had a lot of time out with his, with his eye injury. You know, making sure that's up. Listen, first and foremost, it's your health. So he did take a lot of time off, and um, you know, he'll, we'll, I think we'll see him back in uh, ring uh, in December, and then uh, big mega fight next year. But then again. With people like Billet, <clears throat> they're not going to have four and five fights a year. Do you know what I mean? So long camps, you know. And when you get to a certain age, they have to be longer. Like for Kelfa Khan, you know, you're you're more injury prone. You know, you're older. You have to you have to cut back. On, I'm saying cut back on training, but you have to be a bit more smarter with training. You know, you can't just have a ten week camp and let's kill it because you can't recover because you're not you're not young like you used to be once, like a lion. You know, so you have to be a bit smarter. So the camps do become a bit longer. But well, you'll definitely see him back in the ring. Yeah. But first of all, I, I, I get, we haven't heard anything from him. How, how is he anyway? He's good. He's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, he's got he's got four children, he? so uh, he's always busy. I've got four children. You know, they take a lot of your time up. So uh, I think after that injury, he just went back, kind of just, you know, did his thing with his family. You know, that's some quality time. You can't beat that in boxing. And everyone wants to see everyone back in the ring. But, you know, and oh, we want to, when they're back in the ring, you want to see these big fights. But they have got lives as well. You know what I mean? So, um he took some time out with his family, you know, um, really, really nice, uh, down where he lives. Been down there a few times, you know, had a few chats, not even for diet, just hanging out. So, no, I think, uh, I think he's ready now, I think he's ready. He's had, his, he's had his time off and he's ready to come back. Will he be world champion again in your eyes, mate? I do think so, yeah. Someone like Billy Joe, when he puts his mind to it, can't not be. You know, that, that, that skill that he has. You know, it's like uh, I even think if Kel come back and tried, you know, I've said, you know, Charlo, and it's, it, well, it's what's left, in, it's what's left in their tank, you know. But uh, we'd all love to see him to go on forever. But unfortunately, I stopped somewhere. But I do think Billy Joe, yeah, you'll see him under the world champion. And obviously, you mentioned Kel Brook. This obviously is the end for him. But he's looking in incredible fashion. I mean, people are saying, like, in terms of fighters pulling out, going, oh, Kel, we'll get Kel Brook into fight. So, yeah, how is he? Is he, is he going well? Yeah, Kel's really, really good. Like I say, he's, he's had some downtime with his family. And it's always in him, it's always in fights to want to come back, but I think on the high that Kel went out, he can come back. Everyone says don't because you went out of high, but you know he could come back if he wanted to. He is that good. You know what I mean? And everybody wants to see another big fight with Kel, who doesn't, do you know what I mean? And I just think obviously I think I think he's the biggest I think he's the biggest draw in, you know, one of well, should I say one of the biggest draws in Britain for a for a big fight. Everybody wants to see that night again and you come out to all the lights, you know. And when you look back on it, and, I, and I, I play the video back and I think to myself, you don't soak it in when you're there. And I think, wow, what, a, what an experience to be part of that journey. But um, you never know, you never know. He could do it. I don't, I don't think he'd, he'd probably do um, a fight. What, 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 what's the, what them fights, what Mayweather does? Uh, what, like an exhibition fight, yeah. I don't think he'll do that. Do you know what I mean? I think he's got too much... No disrespect. Too much class, is it? Yeah, too much class to do one of them. But uh, if the right fight comes, who knows? You're, you're just a dangler at the end of a carrot, mate. That's what you're doing. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But um, yeah, whilst you're here as well, um, I would like to get your thoughts. Obviously, tonight was meant to be the Eubank Ben fight, but you know, more and more things are coming out. Uh, a lot of it, uh, you know, rumours. And we, t I think, all we want is clarity with this. But when you first heard that. Uh, Young Conor Ben failed a drug test. What was your instant reaction, Greg? Uh, to be fair, I, I couldn't really believe it. You know, if you've got if you've got someone who's already failed one, you know, um, many many fighters and they fail again, you're like, well, you know, it's kind of like I'm doing it again, kind of thing. But with Conor Ben, it, it, it were a bit of a shock. And obviously, I wait for everything to come out. Everyone's on social media. That, I don't put anything on, I don't have an opinion, I don't ever say, oh, yeah. everyone's got an opinion on social media. I, and I've been watching people all, all week, you know, calling in this and calling that, and nobody knows, it's so fresh. I don't have an opinion until everything's laid on the, out on the table, and like you're saying, you can, you're never going to get clarity with this. It's always going to be a grey area, you know, regardless. But, again, just touching on it, everyone's saying, hey, he's a drug cheat, should be banned for life. He, if he has admittedly took it, then yeah. But, what if he hasn't? What if he hasn't? What if someone just said to him, listen, here, this is, this is, these are great, you know, take these. Because as a boxer, they trust, you, you trust people who you're around, <clears throat> you know. If I give someone vitamins, they don't ask what they are. 
Some do, but I said, no, you know, because I know. But again, if someone just said you'd be absolutely fine, thinking it'd be all right, and then got caught, it's it's on Conor Ben, but he's not took it openly, thinking I'm going to take this banned substance. People might say, oh, that's a load of that's a load of shit, Greg. You're talking rubbish. But who knows? It could have happened, but you can't come out and say that because he's still liable and he still will get a sanction. You know, you could chuck someone on someone's fool when you go past and have a photo with them. They're going to get done. They can get banned for four years. Not their fault, but they're liable because they should have been watching. So there's so many grey areas. So I don't think you're ever going to get clarity with it. You know, they'll probably open the B sample, whatever that says. I can imagine that same. Or if it is, if it has been tampered with, listen, everyone's got an opinion. But I don't think we're going to get to the bottom of it. It is sad. I really wanted to see. To be fair, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to have to sit here and watch it on my phone. <clears throat> you know, we're Liam kind of thing. Don't let me hear you say that. <laughs> you know, I've, I've got to zone up something, can I watch it on my phone? But no, it, it's sad. And do you know what? I do feel sorry for uh, Chris Eubank. And I think how he's handled the whole situation, you know, he's not gone off on one. He said, look, I've met way, you know, I've, I've got in shape. You ought to give him so much respect for, for how he's handled it. He ain't called him really much. He's just done his thing, you know, he could have he, he took Nark, but I think he's gained a lot of fans from this, Chris Eubank. I really, really do, and a lot of respect. But I think we'll see in the next coming weeks what's going to happen. And uh, I can't see Conor Ben not getting a sanction. I, I think it's going to be at least two years. But they're saying reports they could get up to four years. I mean, if he gets four years, it could take him up to 30 years of age. You know, touching on it as well, I think one of the main things with this, we're all just upset I think everyone's a fan of Conor Ben that's why we're so upset with this I think I can't I mean I don't know him I can't see Conor Ben openly taking that I, I, don't, know, I, don't, I don't think anyone can that's the thing so he's so quick to jump on bang when Aggies this is it is that but you know people just google that drug go it can raise your testosterone by 600 600% nothing can it don't work. It don't do that. Do you know what I mean? So that's why he's in shape, and it's a load of rubbish. Like I th hear some people say, no, he must have been on loads of testosterone, and then he's taking that. It's like, well, no, because he's under strict UCAD. You know, he's kind of like they're just touching surface. So unless when everything comes out, then you make a you know an informed decision. And I think people are just this day and age on social media calling, but you're never going to stop it. And even if he does get cleared, he'll always be called a drug cheat, which is sad if it if he does and it does come out, but. It's such a grey area, I don't think you can clear your name ever. You're always going to be labelled as that. So I think we'll see what, see what happens. But yeah, I'm, I'm upset, to be fair, because it was going to be, it was massive, weren't it? It was absolutely massive. So only, only spinner from this is, Kel, you've got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Go to the camera. Say that to the camera for Kel, then. You've got to come back, Kel. Do you know what I mean? We were all waiting for this. You'll bank on a Ben. It's... Uh, you're gonna to have to. You're gonna to have to get your gloves on, son. <laughs> I mean, again, well, thank you very much, Greg. It's good to hear. Obviously, everyone's been piling, piling on. I think um, on on one side, it is good to hear someone from a different angle, a different perspective, and obviously with your background as yeah, your background as well. So, Greg, again, what a successful night for you in the team. Thanks very much for talking to Boxing Social, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you. You're a good man. I always want to interview you.